Hello lovelies, welcome back. It is giveaway number four, the final giveaway, the final probably chatty video of 2020. I packed them all in at the end and we're going out with a bang with a lovely holiday kit, some nice festive makeup for you. Don't mind the fact that I am wearing some moisturizing under eye pads. These are the Lab Life ones. I woke up with super dry skin today in between my retinol and I'm guessing the central heating my skin needed extra moisturizing so I'm popping this on you can actually get lip masks as well which work really well but then I won't be able to talk okay let me run through what you get to win this week over on my Instagram and these are some of the products that I'm going to be using today you're going to be winning a Kat Von D locket foundation this is a full coverage like cult favorite foundation it's been around for years paired with that I'm going to actually use this nano blur product which is like a skin perfecting product I would imagine it's something like a primer this entire kit from Dear Dahlia firstly you've got their holiday shine eye collection you guys check this out so you're gonna win all of these colors the Dear Dahlia lip paradise crystal shine super sparkly this is one of those lip colors that changes according to the person it's being applied on so really excited to try that you'll get a little mirror and then you also get these refillable colors pinky peach color, the sparkly red as well. Finally, you get the My Toy Boy Mascara by Diego Della Palma. This has been my favorite mascara of 2020. It's amazing. I barely have lashes. I had a lash lift yesterday. I thought I would try just this mascara today. This mascara, if you barely have any lashes, will give you lashes. And if you already have lashes, it's gonna give you super lashes. This is literally like a hot water bottle for my fingers. We're in the studio today and my fingers are frozen. Okay, let's see what we can do. Because I'm one of those people, I can't function if I get really cold. I thought in today's video, we'll just go through some surplus questions that you guys sent over the past two times that we've done Q and A's. My in-laws always judge what I do, saying snide comments. What I do, where, it never stops. I find that the act of judging and wow, look at these crystals. <laughs> Sorry, we have to pause to appreciate the crystals for a second. Can you see? It's amazing. So I find the act of judging and judgmental behavior really quite interesting because I think we've all been at the receiving end of it and also at the dishing out end of it. I think that every single person, if we were to be honest with ourselves, we would admit that at some point we've been judgmental towards others. And it can be really, really hurtful, especially in this situation with in-laws. But let's just be a bit more general because I think that anyone and everyone can relate to this. It means that someone's made a quick decision about who you are as a person, about your character, based on probably a very small snapshot. So even when we judge people, say if we're walking past somebody on the street or something, we've just made that snap judgment based on a small time frame. You have to just tell them how it is. And have a conversation with them? Yeah, have a conversation. Snide comments, not acceptable. None of your business. We've talked about boundaries before. I think that one of the aspects of setting clear boundaries is to have those conversations. Um, but the thing is, often, even if somebody doesn't do it to your face, you know that, especially in familial situations, that it's probably happening behind closed doors. People are saying stuff and people are judging. What I find really useful to help ourselves to understand and accept the fact that being judged and probably judging others is part and parcel of life. It's a human characteristic that is not likely to disappear anytime soon. These sorts of characteristics that we consider to be negative things, you know, things like being judgmental, things like envy, things like cruelty, all of these aspects which are kind of like the dark parts of who we are, are characteristics that every single one of us can tap into. So immediately it kind of puts us all on an equal level playing ground. I wanted to keep the lashes quite simple and we're not going to put any falsies on because I want the crystals to really shine through and look how simple and easy that was to put on the eye I'm not going to put anything into the crease I just want to do something very different to what I normally do I don't think that they necessarily need a base just because that shine is just doing all the work for you I find that when people are judging whatever judgment is being made is telling you something about the person who's judging in fact it tells you everything about the person who's judging and nothing about the person being judged. There's no truth to it. Can you see how sparkly? I can't get over the sparkle on the eyes. I am gonna tight line, I think. Should we keep it this zoomed up? Oh no, we're cropping in, aren't we? So we can't. 
for the IGTV. I'm gonna also put this on my lower lash line. You really have to learn not to take these things personally, sweetheart. Trust me. I hear a lot of this kind of stuff. I've had friends who have suffered from these kinds of situations where they feel the intense pressure of being judged. Oftentimes it does hurt more when it's family members because it's not a case of you're just gonna cut people out just like that. Well, you might choose to in more severe situations, but you know, especially when it's kind of underhanded, as you say, they were like doing it in a kind of a shady way. It's really hard to make sense of that and no one else can see it but you. I think you should always hold on to the fact and kind of maybe even smile to yourself on the inside that this is really nothing to do with you at all. And this person, whatever they're carrying, they have to be left to carry it and therefore their judgment belongs only to them. So I think sometimes it helps to visualize these things that can weigh us down, to imagine that whatever this thing is that somebody's trying to make you carry is not yours to carry, it doesn't belong to you. So take that weight and hand it back. Imagine that you're handing it back to the person that's trying to burden you with something that is unresolved in them and it's got nothing to do with you. To not be bound by people's opinions or judgments of you and to act and live with your free will to a standard that is acceptable to you according to how you deem life to be happy and a life in which you can be content. To live every day through that lens is one of the most freeing things that you can do for yourself. So don't be trapped by other people people's chains. If they've chained themselves, that's on them, that's none of your business. Don't let them impose that onto you. Okay, I'm gonna put this nano blur on. It looks a bit silicony, but it doesn't feel silicony. When parent-in-laws are not happy with your work or child upbringing, how to answer them respectfully? Oh, again, this goes back to judging, doesn't it? When someone's not happy with the way you're doing something, you feel that sense of being judged. I think the answering part is respectfully, no matter how respectful you are, they will still class call you disrespectful. Yeah, true. Right? I know I go back to cultural things. It's just, you know, you can't help but notice these patterns. Sometimes part of the culture is if you actually stand up for yourself, even if it is in a respectful way, yeah. you're still but the means. Yeah. That's just a thing, isn't it? But the means means rude. It's like a sense of insolence. How dare you? That's like really rude. Yeah. And I find that that happens a lot with women. Yeah, the other thing is you could be gaslit by them as well. <sighs> yes, I love it. What do you mean by that? He just said, if you can't hear properly because the mic's up yeah. here and he's over there under a mask. So he said they can gaslight you as well, which is quite interesting. Yeah, because they'll make you feel like you're doing something wrong. Yes. And you're the one who's a problem and make you feel like guilty and stuff because you're sticking up for yourself. When in reality, you have every right to say something. Mmm as though speaking your truth really is a bigger crime than what is being done to begin with. Yeah. Yeah, true. Like you're the crazy one, basically. That's gaslighting really, isn't it? Oh look, she's gone crazy. Oh look, she's lost the plot. This is the foundation. Do you think it's too orange? Yeah, yellow. Okay, that was number 53, which is more yellowy. I'm gonna use number 52. Maybe I used to mix it. I think this one looks this better. This one's better, isn't it? Yeah, much better. Yeah. Plus, I'm using a, the sponge is wetter. <laughs> I dipped it in my hot water. <laughs> you have to be not swayed by those things and take it personally, because what that will do is it will just kind of take you off course, and then you're focusing on the wrong thing. What you're doing is you're giving life and you're giving heat to those accusations. Whereas if you ignore what's being said about you, because you know what the truth is, and you stick to your point of, you know, I insist that you please respect me. I think that that will take you a lot further than giving in to the accusations that will be thrown your way. And I think setting boundaries, so just be really clear and say, right, can we all sit down as a family so that I can get this off my chest? Or her you know? husband needs to step up to the plate and do it on her behalf. Oh, yes. The husband can get involved too. Because they're not gonna say anything to him, are they? Well. It's the old patriarchy turning its ugly head again. No, it's, it's not even about that. I don't think you should feel the need to like kind of hide behind your husband. Use him as a kind of a protective field. But I think that if it's your issue and you need to raise it with them, I think that your husband should be there to create that safe space for you so that you can all sit together and you can raise that with the whole family being present. And I think you should. You should get everybody who's involved to sit there 
and you need those kind of witnesses there, such as your husband and you know these mediators and people who will be able to call out if there's accusations leveled against you simply for sticking up for yourself really make your expectations known you know if you do this if this continues then i'm afraid this will have to happen oh, and just kind thing, of lay it out the other thing about child upbringing is say, let's just say they talk about a specific topic saying oh it should be done like this uh, but you have a counter argument providing it's legitimate you've researched it etc you can say well you know what the nurse said it or the i read this article he said you should do that this is a better better method that's yeah. a counter argument respectfully with education not yeah. just no i'm going to do it my way kind of thing yeah does that make sense yeah like i've looked i've actually researched into this i've looked into it and this is what i found so i'd rather stick to it this way someone's asked what are your thoughts on gender reveal parties i think they are quite unnecessary to be honest is that when you reveal the gender of your baby yeah I don't know, I like it. I'm always up for a celebration. Like literally, we celebrate everything. We're like, oh, this time, this many years ago, this happened, shall we celebrate? <laughs> so I don't mind really. I think it's any of your business to be honest. <laughs> Whoever sent that. Like, you might find it to be unnecessary for you, but maybe it means a lot to those other people. I mean, I didn't do it. It's not like I'm defending a choice I've made, but to each his own, right? Yeah. I think it's quite fun. Yeah. Look, whatever brings people joy, let them do it. They're not hurting anyone, are they? Let people celebrate life. You know, it's okay to invite joy into our lives. Not everything has to be doom and gloom. I think they probably come from the point of view that it's excessive in the, in the money spending. Again, it's not... Excessive. Business. Yeah, but excessive, that's subjective, isn't it? Yeah. It's such a subjective topic. Maybe for them in their community, in their circle or whatever, that's like the norm. It's the done thing. Who defines excessive? Like, I'm not doubting that, that for you it's excessive, but then you don't do it then, eh? <laughs> Let other people do it. How to keep ourselves calm and composed? Lately, I tend to snap very easily and regret oh. it later. Oh, so you're losing your temper. By the way, you guys, the, sorry to just go off for one second. This contour color is so good. And it's like, I think it's like five quid, hey? Does it look good? Looks like chocolate. It's like five quid or something. I'll have to link it for you guys. It's so good. Anyway, sorry, what was it about? Oh, somebody losing their temper. Yeah, look, you know what? First of all, well done you for recognizing that there's a problem there. Because a lot of times when people have a short fuse, they find it hard to accept that in themselves. So first of all, well done for admitting that there's a problem. And secondly, for wanting to do something about it. And short of getting professional help, all I would say is start to pay close attention to what is causing that rage yeah. or that. It's usually a trigger, isn't it? Something exactly. Like so whatever it is that's triggering you. It could either be that you get angry the way your parents used to get angry at you or you deal with the kids the way your parents dealt with you or someone elder than you dealt with you when you were younger. So um, I think it's a learnt behaviour a lot of the time, yeah? Yeah. That's my personal opinion. Spot on, babe. So often we just reenact what was done to us and so maybe this is a bit of a pointer for you to have a look at that part of your life and to resolve some of the pain there. And break the vicious cycle. Please break the vicious cycle. Is it, is it, do they mention kids? Is it the kids that they're getting angry at? I don't know. Oh, right. We're, sorry, we're just assuming it's kids. Might not be kids, but it will be linked somehow to your childhood. Yeah. That's for sure. Being mindful, recognizing how your body's feeling and pinpointing where that anger comes from, which part of your body is experiencing it, really helps because what it does in that moment is it takes you out of that sudden, you know, hot headedness, whatever you, that big emotion that you're feeling, to suddenly become kind of introspective and you start to observe yourself and you think, oh, there's that feeling. Oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm doing that thing. And then not to stop there, but to think, oh, I wonder what that's rooted in. I wonder why I'm behaving like that. That spark of curiosity. Curiosity is what enables growth. It's when people are no longer curious and no longer open to discovering more about themselves, where they just stop growing and, in essence, make themselves miserable. We're usually the cause of our own misery, not external factors. That's the biggest lie that we convince ourselves of, that it's the outside world that's causing us misery, actually. 
we do it to ourselves. Judgment is often rooted also in yourself. So just like anger, I feel like anger and judgment are, can get interwoven, there's this overlap. People who judge others always, always, without exception, are doing that same level of judging towards themselves, regarding themselves in that same harsh light. They're sentencing themselves to that same pain that judgment brings with it and they are self-inflicting that. And the only reason they then project that onto others is it becomes such a painful, heavy thing to carry that the only thing you can do is offload onto others. And that's the same thing with your anger as well, that you probably have anger towards something that's happened to you, whether it was, say, how you were disciplined in your childhood and you actually feel angry towards your caregivers at that time. And what do you do with that anger now? You're no longer that child. You're no longer in that scenario years and years ago in your childhood home or wherever you were. And so that inner child feels like there's no way that justice can be sought now. And so the anger has been repressed and it kind of stays dormant until you just in unleash it probably above and beyond on somebody that's probably not deserved that type of reaction or somebody innocent. I really hope children aren't involved here, but if they are, I mean, again, you know, you can seek help for that. You can get, seek counselling. If you're in the UK, you can get counselling through the NHS. It's a long way if you don't want to go privately. If you can go privately, if you can budget that in, then definitely go for it. If not, then, you know, get yourself onto the waiting list. It's better late than never. The stuff that we think has been left in the past, but there it is once again showing itself. And you know what? This will keep showing itself until you resolve it. And it will show itself in various different ways in life until you address it, you face it, you grieve it. Grief is a long and very difficult process, but it's only at the end of a hard road that you'll find what you're looking for. Oh, I really like that. Such a pretty color, really subtle. It was meant to snow today. I thought it was meant to snow last night, you know. But I bet no, you know, like when it's school run time, that's when it's going to snow. The Kent way, and their car is absolutely covered. Yeah, here. In snow? Yeah, so. Where do they yeah. live? Kent. Kent, I think it's Kent direction. Let me just open up in a new tab and see. It's down south. South with all this snow is the north, and it really is. You'd think it'd be the north, but. Oh, Lincolnshire, sorry, not Kent. Well, that's not proper, is Sorry? Oh, baby! If it snows overnight or if it snows tonight, I am snuggling up with Home Alone. I don't care. Leicester's actually um, only several feet above uh, sea level. Right. So we've got higher salt content in our air, so it melts the salt quick, uh, the snow quicker. Yeah. And also, um, the surround of Leicester is all hills. Right. Because we're low, yeah. they're all hills. Yeah. Everything goes over us. That's right. why the whole uh, Springfield relation, because we've got our own little sort of natural biodome. This <laughs> <laughs> is why we've been quarantined longer than everybody else. So that's it. I've done a general wash of pink over the cheeks with my Itamasca blusher in. Katie, you can actually take some of that shimmery colour, the crystal eye colour, and take it under the eye as well if you want, but I wanted to keep it quite clean under the eye, just a black line, and then we've got this crystal pink on the lips and some pink blush. I actually really love how this has turned out. Do you like yeah, it? All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to go and check out my Instagram to go and enter this giveaway. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed watching these giveaway videos. And I will catch you soon, probably in 2021. Take care. Mwah.